I'm Atubo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I'm telling you, I have lots of wonderful things to share with you today. Let's call forth and make demand for our daily bread. Join me. Hey, release your faith as we do this. Say, Father, I release my faith right now, and I demand from your hands my daily bread. I receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm seeing someone there is, there is a particular need that you strongly know that you'll get into trouble if you don't meet that need by the end of today. Hear me? The Lord is opening a door for you today. And by that door, that need will be met. But hear me. When God opens that door, be humble enough to go meet that particular need. There's a particular need that is in your heart. But why the Lord is saying this is because you have allowed strife into your heart where that person is concerned. Yeah, like you're owing someone. And you've allowed strife into your own heart where that person is concerned. But God is going to show you mercy today. But there's a likelihood when that money comes, you will remember to pay that person. But because of the strife, you would say, no, let me see what he wants to do. Now, listen to me. The Lord says, I'm opening that door of mercy for you. But it's how you relate with that mercy, where that person is concerned, that will determine if your way is going to be open or not. So I'm giving you this counsel now by the Spirit of the Lord. When that happens, shave your anger, shave that strife, just go submit and get out of that financial debt situation. Because there are greater things God wants to do with you. There are greater doors God wants to open in your life. But this is one thing that I've always kept you where you are. Strife. You owe people, and when they request for their money, you get so angry, you say all manner of things to them. Now that has been limiting you for many years now. Because you somehow have a way of borrowing money from people, even though you have this bad attitude. You have somehow, you have a way of getting money from people. Well, paying back has always been a challenge. Not because the money doesn't come, but because you are always tempted when the money comes. And this has always been the temptation. Strife. Now, Satan has used that to hold you bound all this while. But it's time for your deliverance, says the Spirit of God. Come out of that lifestyle. Become humble before the Lord and before men. Make up your mind, I will not owe again. And God will help you pay every debt that you owe. He will help you. It's going to be gradual. But first is your attitude. But then there is a door that is going to open for you today. That's what I hear the Spirit of God say. When it comes, it's going to be for a particular, to clear a particular debt that you owe. When it comes, resist that temptation of strife. Humble yourself and go pay that person. Because I see there's, a, there's an argument and you say, let me see what he can do. But the Lord is saying, I'm showing you mercy today. Act on that mercy and it will be well with you. Praise God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Now, yesterday we were talking about David. And I said something to you yesterday. That God held David accountable. And God said the only place David went wrong is in the matter of Uriah. And I pointed out to you that what God meant by he went wrong. He went wrong against the command that God had given him. Now this is how iniquity works. This is how sin works. Now, you know 
sometimes there is this argument, especially people who do who who um, who propagate this. You know, there's this new grace message that people preach. Oh, um, whatever you do, God, it doesn't matter before God, and and all sorts of funny things that people teach today. Now here's the truth about it. It doesn't matter what you think. There is repercussion for everything. There is repercussion for everything. And you see, what people don't realize most times is this. When it comes to repercussion, it's not always about God. For example, if a man commits adultery with another man's wife, now you call that a sin, right? Okay. A sin against who? You see, it's not directly a sin against God. But it's a sin against the husband of that man. Now according to the book of Proverbs, it says that man will never forgive you, even if you give him many gifts. That reproach will last forever. Now, but I've asked God to forgive me. Okay, trust God. God will always say you are forgiven. But God will never compel that man to forgive you. No, he won't. The only thing that God can do for you, Yasha. <laughs> Is whenever that man wants to bring up a judgment or bring up a, a matter against you, God will, by his mercies, instruct you to escape it. But you see the truth? You are going to deal with that thing for most likely the rest of your life, except that man willingly turns his heart from vengeance. You see that now? So you see, it's not always all about God. I think I shared this. Don't know if it's on this broadcast now. Fornication. People commit fornication. Now fornication, you ask, okay, how does it affect God? It's me and this person doing what we want to do. Okay. So, how does God get involved? Um, he just said we should not. Now that's why I tell people, I say when we preach the truth, we, we must actually preach the truth so that Satan will not take advantage of our, the inaccuracy of our truth, of our message, and thereby lure people into error. See that? Now, that, like the Bible says, Adam was not deceived, but Eve was deceived. Eve was deceived because she did not have classic she did not have clear information concerning that tree that's why she was deceived you understand what i'm saying so because sometimes satan deceives people and say eh, but fornication is a sin eh, how why is it a sin how does it affect god say so it's true how does it really affect god eh, god will, it's okay god will easily forgive me all right but now here is the matter you go on, and, and, and let me tell you this thing. What, whatever devil, the devil starts instigating you on, there is always the tendency that it will progress. I'm telling you the truth. Once Satan starts with something, there is always a tendency that it will progress. Now, here is the point. The point is not just that you committed fornication with somebody. The point is what that will now lead into. Several people, their lives have never been the same because of an act of fun. Now, I'm not telling you, oh, um, you, you, you committed fornication, so demons enter. I'm not talking about all those things. I'm talking about literally, physically. People committed fornication and then they ended up getting married. But then you see that becomes a condemnation in their mind. It destroys trust. Now you see, but will God forgive? Oh, he will forgive you. I'm not going to lie to you about that. He will forgive you. But you see, 
the dealing with the result, the dealing with the issues that come afterwards is what you may not be able to deal with. But God will help me deal with the question will be, will you be willing at that point? How? What if God tells you, you know, I tell people, what if God tells you, hey, I see you're struggling with, say, yes, Lord, I'm struggling with this thing. Okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go confess to that person. Now, when God tells you that, that is the end of the matter. It cannot change. And then you look at it and say, ah, hey, hey, I can't, Lord. Oh, no, 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 ah, no, 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 no. Now, that's it. The moment you say no to the Lord, you will continue living and struggling with that thing for the rest of your life until the day you come to that place where you say, okay, Lord, I'm tired. I'm ready to obey. He will still give you that same instruction. Go do what I told you to do. Ah, Pastor, so is there no way out? If God had said this is the way out, then that's the way out. He will not change from it. You see, so, so when we tell people, look, avoid these things, it's not because on God's side he cannot forgive you. But he said the challenge that you're going to be most likely dealing with. For example, you know, people commit fornication. The lady gets pregnant. What's the next thing to do? Let's, we don't want anybody to know. So, because we don't want anybody to know, quickly abort this baby. Oh, please, 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 please. Oh, sometimes the lady say, kind, no, even me, I'm too, I'll be too ashamed. I cannot handle this. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, then they find somewhere, someone somewhere, and the baby is aborted. After all, don't worry, God will forgive us. Yes, God is going to forgive you. Oh, he will. I will lie to you about that, that God will not forgive you. He will. But you see, when it comes to issues of abortion, the earth is the one responsible because there is the extinguishing of life in that circumstance. See that? Now, let me explain how this works because you need to understand. When a man commits murder, two things happen. The earth drinks that person's blood, number one. Number two, a space that that person was occupying on the earth is gone. So the earth takes knowledge of it. When a lady is pregnant, the earth knows that it is expecting someone. And the moment that person sees from coming, it's like you know by this time so so and so person is supposed to come. But then the person didn't show up. The next thing you want to do is who caused this person not to show up? And so the earth will locate you and say you are the one. It will mark you. And let me tell you the truth, the earth doesn't forgive. Why doesn't the earth forgive? It doesn't have the capacity to forgive. Now, God is a forgiving God, right? Yeah, he's a forgiving God. Why hasn't he forgiven the devil? See? Um, because maybe Satan has not repented. Did we repent before God sent Jesus to die for us? No, we didn't. We didn't even know. But I said, why we were still in sin? Imagine, we were even thinking of the next operation of sin we want to do. Christ died for us. So, how come God have done nothing about Satan for his redemption? Because he does not have the capacity to receive that forgiveness. He, Satan, I mean, he doesn't have the capacity. He doesn't have it. There is nothing God can do about his case. And guess what? He is a spirit being. So that's why he cannot be killed. So, now, <laughs> so when, when you extinguish a life, the earth takes knowledge of you. And because the earth does not have the capacity to forgive, the earth will always bring judgment against the person that caused a life to be extinguished. The earth will always come for you. Because now, and when the earth comes for you, it comes in seasons. So you have that time to play around. 
And like God said to Cain, when it comes to mother, now when, when, when I say mother, everything that has to do with extinguishing a life from the earth. Now, deliberately. And then of course we're talking about innocent blood. It's not everybody that dies. For example, during war season, you know, people die. The earth doesn't hold. But then even in the war season, when you kill an innocent person, oh, now, the earth has a seasons of remembrance where it brings to remembrance what you have done. And then it asks, has, what has been done about this person's situation? Nothing yet. Oh, it remembers you. And, and like God, what God told um, Cain, this is, these are the two things the earth does. Number one, it causes poverty in your life. Number two, it releases a vagabond spirit over you. Now, it will, the earth will not yield of her strength to you, just like what God called, told Cain. And two, God said you will be a fugitive and a vagabond. The earth will never allow you to settle. I'm sorry to say, most of the challenges people, most, I said most, of the challenge people go through in marriage, now several things can cause the challenge, but most of the challenge people go through in marriage, this one, mostly they don't detect it. It's because of things like this. Abortions that have been committed. And the earth would, you see, you are married now, everything looks fine. Oh, I did that when I was an unbeliever. So I'm married now, everything looks fine. And then one day, the earth remembers you. And a vagabond spirit is released. And suddenly you don't understand why husband and wife cannot see eye to eye. Okay, what is the problem? They sit down with you and they really cannot point out the problem. It's a vagabond spirit they are dealing with. They don't know. Now until you go before the Lord and ask the Lord to help you. Now this help is on the go. Because the Lord will tell you how to subdue the earth in such circumstances. Now that's where the problem always lies. Will you be willing to submit to the Lord at that time? So it's important you count the cost before you go into certain things. Count the cost. It looks okay today. God will forgive us. But when that time comes, will you be willing to submit to the help that God will be willing to give to you. Our time is up for today. But I pray the Spirit of God gives you understanding concerning this. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.